In this video, we're going to give you tips on what to do in CM Reap, what you should expect during your stay, and what mistakes you should avoid when making your trip. But first, grab a cup of coffee and cue me the intro. I'm Gabe, and this is my wife, Bruna. We're both financial planners turned digital nomads, and we're currently on a seven month trip around the globe. In this channel, we show you that it's possible to travel the world while working and maintaining a healthy work life balance. Here are two pro tips if you're visiting CM Reap for the first time. If you're traveling with US dollars, you do not have to exchange your money at the airport. They already list all their prices in dollars, so you won't have to exchange any money during your stay. And the second tip I want to give you is searching your stay on Google Maps satellite view. Why do I say this? In the first place we booked, everything was amazing. The place was amazing. They had an incredible pool, everything except our driver couldn't even get there because it was flooded because of the rain and everywhere was super muddy. A lot of the streets in Siem Reap aren't paved and this could be a huge hiccup if you're renting a motorbike or if you're depending on cars to get to your place. Other than that, be prepared for a one hour drive to your hotel or Airbnb. Recently, the airport in Siem Reap changed locations. So you'll have to transfer to your hotel and this will cost you around $35 and around an hour to get there. In our minds, Cambodia would be super inexpensive and we would spend less money than in the rest of Southeast Asia. Excluding beer and transportation, we found Siem Reap to be more expensive than other bigger cities like Bangkok in Thailand and Hanoi in Vietnam. When we would go out to a restaurant and buy supplies at a supermarket, we would often spend more than these other cities. One cool thing that I can say and that surprised us a lot was that most people there speak even a little bit of English. Even if we would go out of the touristy areas, we, we would grab tuk-tuks, for example, people would speak English to us, which helped out a lot. And speaking of which, your main way of transportation in CM Reap will be by tuk-tuk. It's an easy and fun way to get around and it will usually cost you less than $2. If you're traveling in three people or less, this is definitely the way to get around. Now, on to where you should book your stay when you go to CM Reap. Like Gabe mentioned before, we booked an Airbnb near the city center, but it didn't have any shops around, market, restaurants, nothing. So if I could give you a tip here, I would tell you to book your place in the city center, specifically near the river. You have many options on what to do around that area. One very cool part about our trip was visiting the temples. Siem Reap has over a thousand temples that you can visit. The most famous one obviously is the Anchor Wat. You can buy a daily pass or pass for three days or even a week. When you buy a pass, you can access over 50 temples that are all across the city. A daily pass will cost you 37 US dollars and a weekly pass 72. We hired a local taxi driver to drive us around the temples and we went to Anchor Wat, to Prom and Phnom Bakeng. Our first stop was the Angkor Wat. This is simply the largest religious monument in the world. Angkor Wat is a masterpiece of Khmer architecture dedicated to the Hindu god Vishnu and later transformed into a Buddhist temple. Its intricate carvings tell epic stories and incredible scenes. As a UNESCO World Heritage Site, Angkor Wat stands as a symbol of Cambodia's rich cultural heritage. Now to the second stop and by far our favorite visit to Prom. This is the most captivating temple we've ever seen in our lives. To Prom was built in the 12th century. It's famous for its mystical atmosphere with massive tree roots intertwining with the ancient stone structures. If you watch the movie Lara Croft Tomb Raider, you might just recognize these visuals. Explore to Prom and you're going to witness the remarkable fusion between ancient architecture and the forces of nature. Our last stop in the afternoon was Phnom Bakeng. This one was built in the 9th century and is one of the oldest structures in the complex. Positioned at the top of a hill, Phnom Bakeng offers a breathtaking panoramic view, especially during the sunset. 
Later that night, we went to Pub Street. Pub Street is a vibrant street in the heart of Siem Reap. This place is a hub of energy lined with lively bars, restaurants, and shops. Unfortunately, one of the things that we realized at Pub Street was the presence of quite a few children that were there working. Child labor and human trafficking are still huge issues in Cambodia. During our stay in Siem Reap, we participated in a social project that helps by keeping kids off the streets and teaching them English. If you want to learn more about this project and how you can help, we're going to link this video somewhere in your screen. A highlight of our trip was definitely visiting the Kulin Elephant Forest. We really wanted to experience meeting elephants and the first thing we did was look for an ethical place that treated elephants well and with respect. We found the Kulin Elephant Forest and booked a tour. Upon arrival, our guide gave us a brief introduction to the place. He explained that for 22 years, these elephants had been used for riders for visitors in the temples of Cambodia. However, in 2018, this practice was prohibited in the country due to its exploitations of the animals. Today, they roam free in their natural habitat. With 75 remaining captive elephants in Cambodia, the protection of this amazing animal is more critical than ever. Kulin has now 12 elephants under their care, 11 female and one male. After this quick brief, the next step was to prepare their meals. We mixed rice, bananas, tamarind and flour like a cake batter and then made these balls to feed them. We spent the morning with three cute females and the whole time we were there they were let loose. No one was holding them, they were walking around and we were following them and some of them are friendly, some are not, so they will tell us which one we should pet, which one we shouldn't and it was super, super fun. We grabbed their ears, their chin, we had a great time with a couple of elephants that were more friendly. After we fed them, we went for a walk and we saw how they behave in the forest and at the end, they took a break to shower. I found it very nice that everything is at their pace and the guides don't force them into anything. In fact, at the beginning of our tour, the guide told us that they wouldn't force them to do anything. If they wanted to walk around, they would, and if they wanted to take a shower, they would. If not, they wouldn't. We were lucky to have had the complete tour with the whole experience. And it was a great time, we loved it. After that, we went to have lunch with the whole group. We booked this tour with a group of 10 people and it cost us $90 per person, which included a morning with the three elephants, lunch at the end of the tour, and a round trip transportation to the location, about one hour from the center of the city. We highly recommend this place, especially because we saw that they treat the animals with respect. All right, guys, thank you so much for staying until the end. We've uncovered in this video the city's vibrant energy, explored the ancient temples, and our connection with the incredible elephants at Kulin Elephant Forest. But this is just the beginning. Stay tuned in our channel for our next destination, Phuket, where we experience exciting adventures. Please don't forget to like, subscribe to our channel so you can join us in the Scarabelli way. We'll see you there.